From research and action since the early 1980s, we've come to understand a lot about HIV, how it is transmitted, what puts people at risk, and some steps that work to prevent transmission. However, some groups and places continue to face high risk of HIV infection, so better prevention programs are urgently needed. A new framework called the HIV Prevention Cascade enables us to use everything we know about HIV to help us tackle the virus. We've tended to group HIV risk and interventions in three categories, biomedical, behavioral, and structural. This way of thinking has been helpful, but it does have problems. We may put all our faith in a biomedical technology, such as pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP, without recognizing that we need to support PrEP use. Or we may be over-optimistic about the impact on HIV of improving gender equality if it is not integrated with other preventive steps. In fact, we need to integrate biomedical, behavioral, and structural responses to HIV. And the prevention cascade helps us to do this. Let's consider an example, a priority population facing high risk of HIV infection adolescent girls and young women in sub-Saharan Africa. In principle, a young woman can choose from and combine a number of direct mechanisms of HIV prevention to protect herself against HIV infection. She could use condoms consistently or take PrEP every day or decide not to be sexually active. Different options might suit her at different times in her life, but her choices are likely to be constrained. Let's look at one possible prevention option. A significant number of sexually active young women are not using condoms or not using them reliably. They would benefit from taking PrEP to protect themselves. What is needed to achieve high levels of effective use of PrEP among this group? Out of the total, only a certain number will be motivated to use PrEP as a prevention mechanism. Why is that? A young woman may not know about her PrEP or may not understand her own risk of HIV or may be constrained by social norms that inhibit women's sexual activity and agency. To increase the number of young women motivated to use PrEP, we need to design new programs or add new and effective elements into existing programs, for instance, in sexual and reproductive health. These elements might include peer-led or clinic-based information and awareness programs or interventions to shift social norms around PrEP use. Schools, media, integrated health services, and the community could deliver these interventions and policies will be needed to support high coverage, intensity, and quality of the interventions. Next, we ask who lacks access to PrEP? Some young women who are motivated to use PrEP may not be able to access it because PrEP is not available or not easily accessible or not affordable or because there's stigma present in the places where PrEP can be accessed. To close the access gap, we could intervene to ensure that health services where PrEP is accessed are convenient, free, and youth-friendly. We could deliver these interventions across the range of places where PrEP might be accessed to support these interventions, policies would need to establish budgets to provide, for example, antiretrovirals, support, health worker training, and social welfare. Finally, some young women in this population may be motivated to take PrEP and have access to PrEP, but still not be able to take PrEP consistently and effectively over time. Daily adherence may be difficult for a young woman because for example, her parents or a partner may not approve, or her living situation may be insecure, or her partner may be violent and or abusing alcohol, or stigma around HIV medication may discourage her. How could we strengthen young women's capacity to adhere over time? Programs could include long-term counseling services, economic or gender-based empowerment, and social protection. The health development and welfare sectors, such as the government and the NGOs, offer potential platforms with policies needed to ensure such interventions are in place. In this way, the Prevention Cascade offers a framework for identifying gaps in HIV prevention and for planning interventions to close those gaps. 
we can then draw on our interdisciplinary understandings of HIV risk. In our example, to focus on support for young women's capacity to adhere to PrEP. We can use the prevention cascade to design interventions for other priority populations, including, for example, sex workers, prisoners, transgender people, and men who have sex with men. We can focus on one or more other direct mechanisms of prevention, for example, male or female condoms and medical male circumcision. We can then identify the most effective interventions and platforms in order to achieve prevention at scale for those facing a high risk of HIV infection. In this way, the HIV prevention cascade can support efforts to reach ambitious global targets for the reduction of new HIV infections.